All right. It says it's now on Facebook Live. Awesome. Yeah. I'm live on Facebook. You're live. I cannot believe it. I and have been waiting to get live on Facebook forever. And Reverend Chris, you just it magically appeared. Oh, I, I, I'm, I can do stuff like that. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen, you guys, thanks for joining. Please come on, bring, bring it in the room, bring it in the room. We are back again for another powerful episode of the Living by Faith Zoom um, by Mount Zion Baptist Church. So um, we are excited. So please share right away. Give us some, show us some love, show us some likes. All right. Um, text, your, text your people, say we own. And we have two phenomenal guests, um, three phenomenal guests will be on the um, episode today. So again, my name is Reverend Mo Brooks. I am the director of youth ministries at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where Dr. Addis Moore serves as pastor. And um, our co-host is... I don't know what Reverend Jackson's doing. My name, my name is, uh, my name is Ryan Jackson, Reverend Ryan Jackson. I am the director of Christian education uh, at Mount Zion Baptist Church, and um, you know, as Reverend Mo indicated, we are super excited and elated to be on. Uh, we have uh, some phenomenal guests on today, and it's our mission at Mount Zion to empower people to transform themselves and the community because we see our vision being lived out, a vibrant community living by faith. And we know that this episode will be extremely impactful for you in two ways. Number one, uh, this will give you an opportunity to really have uh, just some interface with, with Dr. Moore, with First Lady Moore, with our assistant to the pastor, Reverend Chris, and also, um, we know that you'll be able to glean some very helpful and practical principles to your life um, that you can apply to get God results. So we're super excited that you are on. The numbers are climbing. Uh, Reverend Chris, super excited What's to up? have you on as well. Thank you. It's such a joy and a pleasure to be here on the show to be here live with you two wonderful personalities week in, week out doing phenomenal so, work here on YouTube, so, Facebook. So, so Reverend Chris, could you share uh, with the streaming audience uh, your role at Mount Zion um, and um, whatever else you'd like to share? So I am, uh, this is the graduation season for people across the country and actually uh, about 14 years ago, during this graduation season, probably about March, I was hired in as the assistant to the pastor of Mount Zion. Generally, what that means is I assist Pastor Moore with his pastoral duties. Um, when you look at the scripture, for example, Exodus chapter 17, holding up the arms of Moses, or um, just when you look at the scripture, making the job of the leader easy. So that's my job at Mount Zion in a nutshell. Amen. That's also, awesome. I, I, you know, um, well, let me hit a, a couple comments uh, on the stream. Uh, Reverend yeah. Moat, Josh said, Ryan was playing tic-tac-toe again when you asked me what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Reverend, Josh, he just, Chris, stay, he just stay off track, up? man. Reverend Chris, and then, and then Holly, Holly Downing said, I was playing Tetris. <laughs> you probably was because that's what you was doing last night. <laughs> I thought he was playing Candy Crush myself. <laughs> I see uh, Sister Carolyn Franklin said good afternoon. So good afternoon to you and to uh, Sister Walker. Yeah, 14 years. So it's been 14 so, years. So, I mean, that Reverend Chris, that is a, uh, a powerful story. And I know uh, just being on staff for six years now, Reverend Mo, you've been on staff for how long? Going on five. Man, Going on five. We need to get you a watch or something. Man, it's... Yeah, you know a pin it's, or it's, something. It's, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's really been um, an incredible journey of uh, being able to do ministry with all of you. Um it's a joy to see that uh, we are all in sync 
in all in agreement with uh, the, the vision and the mission set forth by our pastor. And I know it that we're all in sync because think about it, fellas, we got on all gray today. That was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Who could have planned that? Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> only one, only one. Yeah. So I, you said no, you six be- years for you, Reverend Jackson, right? Six years. Wow. That, yeah. that's, it doesn't seem like that long, but it does because you fit so well. Man, we do I feel mind. like I, I just joined yesterday. The, the the time and the years truly do fly by. Yeah. I remember being in conversations with Pastor Moore, um, you know, looking at you. You know, one of the things that Pastor Moore does, and uh, he's a visionary. He's really the epitome of uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, where it says, yeah. equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And when he sees somebody with potential, uh, it's almost like he can look into your future like, man, this guy needs to be doing full-time ministry. And your name just kept coming up, Reverend Jackson. Well, Deacon Jackson at that time. You know, he <laughs> needs to be doing full-time ministry. And when he brought you on, it was like a hand in the glove. I ain't talking about OJ's glove. I'm talking about it was a... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. look, at that, look at that, Reverend Brooks. I mean, he... he for the, even before the five years, he was so adamant, like, man, God told me I'm going I'm to do this job. And he started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just a natural choice. Like, man, we got to have Red Brooks. Yeah, so, that's what's up. Hallelujah to his holy name. So, Listen, oh, look at that. We, we, we got Pastor Moore and First Lady. They are coming in live. <laughs> They look like they in heaven. Look you, at you that. You see the glow? You see the, the glow, glow man. Y- do we y'all see what's heaven. going on? <laughs> what y'all join us? <laughs> yeah, we in heaven. What y'all join us? Y'all come on. Hey, y'all, y'all press some hearts for our pastor and first lady. Go ahead and press them hearts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all come off the mountain. Come off the mountain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. Is that better? So listen. Oh, it's been too bright. That's no, good. You, That's good. You good, Doc? You sure we look? We look bright. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't shared this yet, please share it. Um, you will be thoroughly encouraged. You will be blessed by what is about to happen today um, mm-hmm. with our pastor and our first lady of the Mount Zion Baptist mm-hmm. Church in Kalamazoo, mm-hmm. Michigan. Um, so we really. <laughs> I uh, want to encourage you and encourage other people. This is a special, special episode tailor-made just for you, all right? Just for you. So you don't want to miss this, and um, it's going to be awesome, all right? All right. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> people are saying hello. Are we they, still they got like the we coming it? in. They, they got everything coming in. No, hello. Y'all, hello. no, y'all came down just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Pass more, first lady. How y'all doing today? What's going on? How y'all doing? We're we're great. How are you guys doing? We're doing wonderful. Doing great. Wonderful. Praise Um, the Lord. As in your words, if it was any better, it'd be Monday. Uh, So (laughs) now, now I gotta say this because my wife in the background say y'all look so cute. Pass them on, first lady. You you know she gonna say, ah, yeah, Uh yeah. Yeah. That's very kind of her to say. First lady, so so this is the first order of business, okay? So we have like when we do this, you gotta get past more a kiss on the cheek, all right? Like this. <laughs> where y'all get, where y'all get that from? So, so, so well, you so, have to do it loud, you know old people can't hear. <laughs> so I got it. So so Reverend Mo, now that you mention that, I think one of the greatest sights that I am that I love seeing, particularly, it could be during the anniversary time or it could be during the celebration when Sister Moore, when you sneak up behind Pastor Moore and you hold him tight and you give him a kiss. (laughs) And I think think that's the more time than any I've seen him blush, you know? So we we love seeing that. You know, that's how I got him. I snuck up behind him and gave him a kiss. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, yes, yes. So, so listen, you guys. This is this is a special, um, twenty-five yes. year edition um, yes. of this episode, and we really, 
um, want to give past, I mean, Pastor Moore, actually, he really wants to say some things to you and First Lady. So yes. we just kind of want to open up with um, Pastor Moore, First Lady, reflecting off of um, this past weekend. Um, generally, like, what are your thoughts and what would you like to say to the members of Mount Zion and the community at large? Well, well first of all, I want to really... Um... Uh, wanted to come on and because normally we would do this at worship service when everybody comes back on the Sunday after the anniversary, we would talk to the community with the congregation up close and first personal. And since we are spread all over the world now, uh, yeah. I thought it was a good idea for us to come on and actually just thank the membership of Mount Zion, uh, thank the Mount Zion community, thanks all the sons and daughters of Mount Zion, all those in individuals that have been impacted by Mount Zion. We just really want to wholeheartedly thank you uh, for your expression of love, your gifts, your your waves, your tweets, your um, your your hellos, your your thank yous, the cards, the letters, the gift, everything. Really, our heart was as a scripture. We were overwhelmed uh, by love and appreciation. So uh, you actually did uh, Mount Zion exactly what the scripture commands, and and we just really want to thank you uh, because um, we really feel appreciated. Uh, we feel loved, and and so uh, we thank you for that. I just want to say everybody went, went above and beyond. Um, I was totally surprised. I'd never been um, in a church with hardly nobody in it like that before, even though I've been sitting at home <laughs> tweeting and uh, um, <laughs> texting. Yeah. Uh, so it was just amazed at behind the scenes what was going on and the amount of people that watched the, the, the service. And also people that came out in the rain that showed that people really uh, cared. So uh, we just greatly appreciate uh, it. Uh, we are so happy to be uh, uh, able to mm, serve in this part of the country. Mm, we are so happy that mm, God directed us to this part of the country. Uh, and we know that, you know, mm, with God, all things are possible. And he's just working everything out. And let me say here, the, to, to, to have a, a viral anniversary, like this is the, I'm, I'm a great one for first. I like trying to different things and new things. And uh, yeah. and actually the um, uh, the congregation flipped it on me uh, this year because I, I had said when this old pandemic came out that everything we do, we shouldn't stop anything that God has told us to do or else God didn't tell us to do it. We shouldn't stop it. We're gonna do everything we've been doing. And that's what we've been endeavoring to do, and endeavoring to do during this pandemic. And that was flipped on me during the anniversary because I wanted to be like, well, no, we don't need to do this. And they flipped my words on me. And they yeah. say, well, you said, let's do everything that we've been doing. And this is what we've been doing. So we're going to do it. And I'm glad you did because uh, uh, it blew my mind. It was beyond my expectation. Reverend Crazy, I mean, Reverend Timothy Crotchler, Reverend Crazy <laughs> Timothy Crotchler <laughs> went literally wild yeah, on that he sun, did. Sunday afternoon. He went yeah. bonkers with that he scripture. Did. He quoted every scripture in the Bible, every book in the Bible, every quote, every, every research person. He went totally crazy. And so I yeah. uh, appreciate him and all the, the acts of kindness and love. We just can't thank you enough. That love is shown toward us, uh, the two of us and our families. Yeah, Amen. greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. We can't thank you all enough. We can't thank you enough. So Jackson, I got, I got one, I got one thing before you get in there. Oh, so Lord, um, Lord. just, kind of, just kind of behind the scenes, just a little <laughs> bit. Um, I, I may know this, but I don't think a lot of people, they, they might not know this. So my question is, do you like really read every single card, every letter, every thank you note? Like, how does that look for y'all? Every single card, because every single thank you note, every single letter, we, I have to read them. We have to read them because if a person would take time uh, to get a card and they would, it has words on it. So that's special to them. And they intended to send a message and to take time to write something on there and give you a card, you owe that to a person to read it. So we mm -hmm. literally read every card, everything that's given to us. We actually read it and we, we actually internalize it. And that's why we saw appreciate it because individuals don't have to do what they did, um, but they did. And so we eternally appreciate it. Yes, everyone. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. amen. And amen. I just, and amen. I just wanted, amen. cause I wanted all of you to know that, like I know that I've seen him do that with the youth, read every last thing, right? So 
I just want you all to know that that Pastor Moore and First Lady, they're reading everything. All right, everything. so um, praise God for you. Amen. And, and he keep them. He keep them. So he still got them. He'll look at them again two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I get lonely and down and out, I pull out a card and I read the card. <laughs> you ain't going to read yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. Then, then after a while, he'll start remembering him and quoting them to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so, Reverend Chris, uh, for you kind of being the uh, mastermind behind uh, the worship experiences and the worship outline to ensure that we have flow. From your vantage point, as you think about um, this, the six o'clock celebration anniversary a service that we had, from, from your perspective, what did you have in your mind in crafting that worship outline? Thank you, Reverend Jackson. That was such a great question. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Moore, you got your phone. Check your text, me text message if you can. So here's, um, <laughs> like I just kind of <laughs> slipped that in there. Yeah, that's good. Um, actually, Pastor I, I, I Moore. Can't... Yes. <laughs> What 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 is say? <laughs> I can't tell you what it said. What? Um, All right, Ram, go so, back. Go ahead. So I'm on here representing the the, the committee, um, um, but I can't take the credit for this particular idea uh, for doing okay. the, you know, as far as the virtual service and all of that. We, um, you know, we when we hit this Corona, we were thinking, okay, we still want to celebrate Pastor Moore there was a banquet that was scheduled for this past weekend at the, uh, at the Radisson. So we had to mm -hmm. change plans on that. You know, we were thinking about postponing, but of course, with all the changes and all the things that, that's happening in the state, uh, we just didn't know exactly when that could be and how. And with this being a, a milestone year, year 25, we, it's like, man, we, we've still got to celebrate, not just for them, but we need to celebrate them. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of like C.S. Lewis. He said, um, I can't quote him verbatim, but he said, appreciation yeah. isn't complete until it's communicated. So we've got to communicate that to Pastor Moore. So when somebody brought the idea to me, said, you know, why don't we do a virtual service? And, you know, we'll still invite a preacher in to come preach, which I think is one of the first in the nation to do, invite a preacher in during Corona. Amen. Uh, but invite a yeah. preacher in, you know, do a drive by hello, Pastor Moore, First Lady. So I'm thinking, okay, we can we can do this. So as we laid out the service, the whole focus was we're celebrating God for the gift of our uh -huh. pastor and first lady. Uh -huh. So looking at how it went, it, it was flawless. Like it it couldn't have been better. So I'm 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 greatly appreciative of our team that came together to pull this together. Amen. Just, just before, just before we we go into um, the next question, and I turn it over to Reverend Mo. I just want to uh, interject a few comments uh, from the streaming audience. Uh, Debbie Jones said, "We appreciate you, Pastor, uh, and family for your godly leadership." Shirley Riley said, "There is never enough we can do, or." to give you, to show you all that we appreciate uh, you both. Uh, Sister Betty Walker said, we seldom get to see you two together as you are each doing ministry all the time. It's so good to see you uh, having a chance to relax. So, kiss! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, 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 crazy. <laughs> hey, Dr. Boy, you, I'm you hot. grinning from- I'm, I'm hot now, I gotta get some water, man. <laughs> oh, yes, making me hot up in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so, so Pastor Moore, First Lady, um, on top of the appreciation, um, just, just behind the scenes of uh, 25 years, you know, um, just kind of describe how has these 25 years been for you all? And I'm just kind of, I want to leave it general because I, I would like you just kind of navigate how you want to navigate. <laughs> the time went by extremely fast. It seemed like it was only a few years ago that we came here. 
So yeah. time has just been flying. So it's been a good time. We've known, got to know a lot of different people. God has been continuously blessing. He's in, been in control. And we couldn't be more appreciative enough of what's happening in this part of the country. Uh, we, are very, I, we are very happy to be in this part of the country for the relocation and the move. And just the way God has been working everything out, yeah. we can't be more happy. Amen. And I can, I can echo that uh, even from the, the way we got here, uh, how we got here, when we got here, how everything literally fell into place um, by coming to Kalamazoo. Um, we were able to, um, Gwen was able to transfer her job, job here. Um, even the house we got, uh, um, selling our house in Saginaw, moving here, everything literally just fell into place as if God had already orchestrated and we just had to walk into it. The congregation that he connected us with, um, uh, the people and the relationships that were built. And so it was just primed to move and, and God brought us together. And, and I'm thankful for the team uh, at Mount Zion, the leadership team, thankful for the, the membership because literally we could not have made it. We didn't make it 25 years by ourselves. Uh, yeah. There's a whole membership whole lot of members that have come, that have gone, that have gone to glory, that have transitioned, but every single person is important to really make this 25 years. And, and it's just awesome to see what God has done and continues to do as we walk in, uh, in obedience to him. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Be be before I go to the next question, Reverend Chris, we just got a whole bunch of hearts. He whole just held Cameron for a whole bunch of hearts. <laughs> uh, everybody had the opportunity to see Cameron. Um, Dr. Moore, First Lady, from, from your vantage point, as you look back over these 25 years, by the way, I feel like uh, Tom Brokaw or um, uh, Walter Cronkite or uh, what's what's the other gentleman name, uh, name? Oh, Brian Gumble. Brian Gumble. <laughs> I feel yeah, like so Mike Wilbon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mo. You like that's who you are. Y'all hey, right. yeah, making a new name for yourself. Just claim your own name. You making a new name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I heard about y'all. They talk. Them ladies talking about y'all from the AFC home. The <laughs> red hair. Oh, oh, okay. Y'all making a name for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, as you for the WWE fans, I was thinking, you know, Michael Cole or Jerry the King Lawler or good old JR. But we're going to <laughs> JR. <laughs> so as 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 you reflect uh over these 25 years, uh -huh. um, share what were some of the uh, maybe standout or memorable moments for you as pastor and first lady? Like something happened and you're like, wow, like this is something I'll never forget and it impacted you in such a great way. All right, go ahead, Gwen. So well no offense to you choir members, but uh when the choir split up <laughs> and people, <laughs> people were upset. You can't, you can't and Chris and Mike was playing. <laughs> oh, Dr. Moore. Uh, that was really different. Uh, he didn't want me to say that. Like I said, y'all y'all kind of to my heart and not my head. Y'all know I'm authentic and I'm original, right? Amen. So anyway, but God just, hold on, hold on. God just works everything out. He does. Amen. You know, it's in God's timing and he work it out. Amen. It's all in God's timing. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and you know, I haven't been the first choir the I've been in. I've been in choir <laughs> since I've been big enough to sing. So yeah. I've been in a whole lot of choirs. Okay, I'm right. not the best singer, but I've been in choir. So, but that was really that, different for us. Uh, we just have to walk uh, in the spirit and walk in the word uh, and just stay steadfast on uh, whatever happens. Yeah. The other thing is when we first uh, started coming here, uh, we were working like six months up in Saginaw. So we would come down here on Friday evening, spend, stay down to Sunday night, and it was through the storms and the ice and driving back up there um, on Sunday nights. And then I had to be to work, I think at six or seven o'clock, the kids had to be in school. So that yeah. was really different. Yeah. Uh, but it's like you said, it was all because of God, everything. I've 
What's going on here? Michael. What's going on? Red Mike. What's up, man? Yeah. Surprise, Red Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I've, seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of growth in the church. Um, and no offense to y'all. I say y'all now. Uh, when we yeah. first came, people were hardly even speaking to each other. And Mount Zion was the type of church that you had to have a a big mink coat mm -hmm. and a big car okay. and people yeah. weren't speaking. So it's a whole nother uh, population of people now. People have changed. They're really there for the word and to obey the word. So, yeah. and I think I've said enough and I'm in trouble. So like I said, y'all forgive me, <laughs> count it to my heart and not my head. Cause I've been up all night. I volunteered <laughs> last night. First lady, so, you, you, you good. And, and I want to, I want to draw one part and I, I really want people, I know first lady already articulated, but I really want people to see the upfront sacrifice and the commitment to this ministry from the get go with traveling from Saginaw and back and you know still going to work and doing all those things that's huge and monumental and we want to say thank you and you know i don't think a lot of people know that so thank you for sharing that um man this behind the scenes sermon got me saying behind the scenes a lot but behind the scenes we appreciate that yeah and just a little tidbit on that when we were moving because we would drive back and forth and and so i would have sermons and funerals to do and and so i was when would drive and i was literally sitting in the back of the van writing sermons and doing work and getting wow. ready because we were back and forth uh, for six months, but God brought us through that. And uh, so Amen. now we're 25 years. And, and so it's, it, it's good to see uh, our older son that Michael, Michael that pop in. And so we <laughs> thank God Amen. for him. Amen. I was terrified. I didn't know who was on the other side of yeah, that thing. We were like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Rip Mike, man, how you doing? I'm well, man. How y'all doing? We, we doing we doing well, man. I got I got the Corona fro. You got the Corona beard going, bro. I see it. There, there you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so 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 Pastor Moore and First Lady, uh, like for you to really speak to the importance of uh shepherding people, caring for them, loving them. I think you two have a very interesting dynamic and what i mean by that is i mean obviously when it comes to the word of god it's a non-negotiable uh the scripture is what it is we don't make excuses for the scripture um so you're very tight on the scripture and you hold people accountable but yet also at the same time um you're extremely enjoyable to be around um Aww. love going on love going on road trips with you because if you just sit back and listen you will hear some of the most hilarious stories so you're gonna be you're gonna be laughing at somebody you're gonna be joking <laughs> um speak to speak to really the importance of you all being relational and as you indicated sister Moore, when you first got there uh the church may have not been um as relational but what did you do to really turn that tide to ensure that there, that that the ministry was relational and people felt comfortable interacting with you all? Well, first of all, I think uh, both of us we we are from Georgia, um, so we and both of us for, are from large families. So become being, being part of a large family and being uh, from the South, the way we were raised, you are relational by habit and by necessity. And so then we started, particularly being the leader, just mirroring it. And, um, and Jesus talks about, if you want a friend, you gotta first be friendly. And so the, the leader is responsible for setting uh, the tone for the church and the ministry. And so with, with, with the two of us and our family and our children, uh, Michael and Chris, when we were here, so it was us. And so we just had to, to do what we did. And, and I remember God uh, speaking to me and said, don't try to be anybody else, just be who you are. And, and, and so that's what we start doing. And then uh, living, preaching, and expecting folk to do scriptures, that's the real deal because the word literally changed us when we obey the word. And so the expectation uh, that people will change when the word is gone for. Mm -hmm. And so we just start modeling that. And, and um, if folk didn't talk to us, we talked to them. And we kept talking until they start talking back. 
<laughs> the other thing, when we first came, the church was real quiet. Nobody wanted to say amen. And they looked around at you. If you did say amen, it's like, I ain't never been in no church like this, this quiet. But that yeah. changed. Amen. So, and I'm so grateful uh, that it did change. Uh, I want to echo. Vocal, uh, towards the word. What you guys, you guys got to say, Mike and Chris? I know this is not like, you know, the Wednesday Bible study, but. I want to echo that um, Sister Betty Walker, she said, the congregation takes on the personality of the leader. Pastor is relational. And then Danielle Smith talked about Passion First Lady being relational was a big impact for her joining. Uh, so, I mean, really, it stems from the leadership. You know, at, you can tell the climate of a church by look, I mean, the uh, personality of the, of the leader by looking at the people that the leader leads. Ah, yeah, yeah. And so that's that's really incumbent on who you all are. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Re Reverend Mike, you got anything you'd like to share? Hey, what they saying is, you know, is is is, is facts and, and historic. So I think uh too having a pastor that has a family and uh you know you know brings a lot of other families there. And, you know, different situations and family dynamics, too. So it's been a fun ride for the last 25 years. It's been a, it's been a real fun ride. It's not like it's, not like it's a type of prison cities, but it's been, it's been a fun ride. That's some fun. So, so Pastor Moore, first. So wait Jackson, a minute. Go so, ahead, go ahead, man. So, so now, Dr. Moore, you can understand when you think about Myself and Reverend Mo, I know from time to time we could be a little bit uh, rambunctious. Uh -huh. you know, we could yeah. be a little nutty. Hey, we, you produced us. <laughs> you know, we're, we're 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 a great hybrid of you and First Lady. <gasps> Go ahead, Reverend. So 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 fast some more, First Lady. Yeah. Um, now I'm not looking for you to go into detail, but I believe that you guys do a great job modeling. You know, can you talk? about the importance of modeling, especially during hard times and trying times, um, just the importance of modeling um, before the congregation, you know, because um, I think you guys do a phenomenal job at it. Well, first of all, uh, and it goes back to being who you are for real. Um, it's hard to follow someone that's faking. It's hard to find follow a person that is not the same because you don't know what direction to go to. And, and if you've got an, an issue, you don't know what person you're going to go to. So it, it's important, particularly in the church, for us to, first of all, obey the scripture and then model obedience to the word of God so that others can follow in a correct way. And I've often said this way, we should live in such a way that if people follow us, they will run into Jesus. So in a real sense, um, what happens People follow the God in you before they follow God for themselves because they see something in the individual and that per that, that stands out in this different. So they start following that person. And so that's why we should not ever misuse our influence because influence comes from God. And so then, and we've got to use that influence to lead folk to God. And so then as we model obedience, when people follow us, they're actually following God, and they, we, need, we need to be obedient long enough so people follow us and to the point that they run into God, and even if we mess up, they keep following God because they follow us long enough to run into God. And the danger is if we're not obedient long enough when individuals are following us, when we mess up, then they fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's the importance of modeling. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, even during this situation, I have learned that whatever state I'm in, to be content. Uh, even now, I mean, I'm still taking care of people. I'm still going to the grocery store. I mean, there was a fall in the stock market, but, you know, that's just money that you probably never see. But whatever state I'm in, I'm learning to be content. And I'm happy. And what's wrong, Micah? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> He's just I mean, laughing. Yeah, whatever state I'm in, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I get at myself, you know, I get a joy out of uh, caring for people, especially people who are not able to do for themselves, people who don't have families. So I'm just really happy to be able to do that and still able to do it at my age. 
And see, one, one thing, well, another thing that's very important that I think is important in our relationship, that, that Gwen is a professional in her own right. So there's never any competition of relationships because she knows who she is and she has a life, a complete life, you know, uh, business, uh, degrees, and she's able to do, she's doing her own. And, and then she's accompanying me. And so there's never any, that's why you don't ever see her trying to do all this crazy stuff because she don't need to, because her what she does encompasses her life so much mm -hmm. that she doesn't need to do all that other stuff. And I really uh, uh, thank God, thank God for her, her realness and just being who she is because mm -hmm. there's no pretense, and y'all saw that earlier uh, as we come. <laughs> there's no pretense. She doesn't try to do, be like anybody else. She doesn't yeah. try to put on airs. I mean, she is who she is, and I appreciate that. And and if we do have a problem, we don't we don't sling mud in front of the church. You know what I'm saying? Not, not in front of the church. So we can talk to each other about it. So Amen. some people do that. Yeah, not in front yeah. of the All of that dirty language, laundry come out in front of the church. Not you don't right. have to do that, you know? Not in front yeah. of the church. So and, uh, and we appreciate that yeah. real talk. I mean, we do, we do, and I'm speaking on behalf of the whole congregation of Mount Zion. We appreciate that. Hey, what if I can't? If I can say something though, go ahead. Over, man. The, over the years, there's been people, you know, that and that and, and dad really hit off that people like didn't like them, didn't want him to be the pastor, you know, didn't like him for obvious reasons or the program, but he remained consistent, like treated them well. I remember as a kid, you get a, you get in trouble, you get scolded at, and after you get, you know, get your whooping, you good. And so everybody move <laughs> on. And so he never treated anybody different. Yeah. You know, he never did any, half of the people he buried, he spoke good of them over their funerals and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's the thing, this the thing too. He like, that, yeah. he like, this, this the thing, the family never treated anybody bad or never did anything bad. Yeah. And just show respect to people. Uh, so one thing I learned is to treat people regular because I've seen my leader treat people regular <laughs> in the midst of the fire. <laughs> and I, I definitely have to say that he's anointed to do that, what he's doing, pastoring people. Yeah. Because uh, some oh. people are really difficult. <laughs> they say difficult behavior, but he's able to handle it and treat them with the utmost dignity and respect and in a godly manner, according to the Bible. You see that, Mo? I'm anointed. Hey, man, I see it. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you first uh, obviously arrived to Mount Zion uh, 20, over 25 years ago, you were in a different season. You were, you know, you were raising your own children. Now some 25 years later, you not only have your own children, but you have your grandchildren. Yeah, so share, yeah. Share, share with us just the experience of, of what it's like to be a grandparent and, um, you know, what makes you feel great about being a grandparent? Here it is, here it is, here it is. Um, let me show And every stage in life, and most people don't know this, and I don't intend to preach, but but I'm a preacher. Sorry, uh, Let's try again. So, but <laughs> we don't understand that everything that happens at home prepares us to do church ministry. That when the home is messed up, then you're gonna mess up at church. And so our family uh, that we came here with, and now uh, when uh, uh, our, our children got married and now uh, they have uh, grandchildren, that's another level of ministry. Mm. And so that teaches us how to do ministry in an expanded way. And grandchildren teaches you how to minister to a different generation. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's very paramount for us to notice every season in our life because it prepares, prepares us to do greater ministry for God. So with grandchildren now, guess what? I know how to relate to babies and little kids because that's a family thing. I have to do that naturally. And now it's just another joy because with the grandkids, especially with us as grandparents, 
we could spoil them. We could do everything for them and then send them home. So that the parents have to raise them. So we get to spoil them. And we, we get to do all the stuff we couldn't do for them because it would have spoiled them. But we get to spoil them and say, go back to your mom and daddy. Right. And those grandkids, they treat you like superheroes. They treat yeah. us like superheroes. Grandmother. Oh, they don't say grandmama, mother, grandmama. But uh, <laughs> anyway, they just treat you like you're some kind of yeah. super extraordinary hero. Yeah. So it's it's just it's just different having grandkids, and we we're really having we're really having fun with them. They text us today already. So <laughs> That's what's yes. Up. So uh, Hebrews Hebrews chapter number twelve um, sheds a light on this whole idea of discipline and correction and how important it is um just as god disciplines us as believers his children he does so uh because he loves for he loves us and he cares for us so with that being said reverend mike uh reverend chris reverend mo let's kind of share with everyone what's uh, a moment wherein you, you were disciplined by pastor moore and it stood out to you and you'll never forget it. Oh Lord. Jesus. See, I think so now as you as you as you are thinking, because this is vitally important. And I think I think when you talk Jackson, about this is too much for TV, man. No, this is too much for the live, man. No, so Pastor, because he's going too far. <laughs> no, so because right. think about it from this perspective. Um spiritual leadership. It it not only um, encourages you, inspires you, motivates you, but <laughs> great spiritual leadership holds you accountable, uh, corrects you when you are in error. So, and those are the moments that serve as um, great growth moments for us as believers and individuals. So, with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to my brothers. All right, so I guess I'll go first. So I, 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 I guess, you know, what would give us a whole lot of ratings, I could talk about some of these whippings. <laughs> <laughs> they share two but, stories, do a whooping one and the other one. <laughs> all right. So, um, you know, growing up, I think, I think my mouth would get me in trouble. I, I would say um, uh, bad things to my brother <laughs> in his presence, you know, uh, so those things I got in trouble for. And I just remember my dad saying, don't you ever say that about your brother. You know, you always <laughs> got to speak well of him. So I, I got whipped for stuff like that. Gotcha. Now, uh, 14 years ago, I remember being in a meeting with Pastor Moore and, um, you know, I, I, you know, 21 years old, I'm his assistant. Now I'm starting to share some of the ideas I had. And then uh, once I felt like I wasn't being heard, I kind of, I really shut down. And Pastor Moore, like, man, you need to talk. And I'm thinking, man, I just got shut down. And uh, after the meeting, I'll never forget, he led me into his office. He said, now, look, the reason I hired you is because you got something to offer. He said, don't you dare be silent in another meeting like that again. And that's so impactful that it not only impacted me, you know, giving me confidence, like, okay, I have something to share, but I've been able to use that with other people and let them know the reason you are here is because you have something to offer. Don't be quiet because you feel like you're not heard at this moment. You still got something to offer. And that advice not only has helped me, but it's helped countless numbers of people uh, find confidence because we have confidence in them. So those are the two I'm going to share. <laughs> <laughs> Red Mike? Hi, man. Let's Don't see. Bring you around. I know. Um, <laughs> let me think. You should have practiced that, Mike, before you said it. Um, uh, oh, I just say, uh, you know, growing up, growing pains. Uh, I say every time we speak or we talk, there's always a lesson to be learned. And so even as an adult, I'm still learning lessons. So um, I think one of the whoopings I got, I think, let me think, Mama, help me out. Mama, daddy. Uh, I, I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. All right. So, dog, this is some of this stuff stick with you forever. Uh, 12 years old. Was I 12? 
Maybe I shouldn't talk about that. All right, 12 years old, uh, I thought it would be slick to try to back my dad's car out of the garage. It's Cadillac Seville. He even put his head down on that one. And uh, I tow like the car up in the garage. And I was on punishment the whole summer. And I still owe him to this day. And every time he thought about it, he whooped me. Just the whole summer. Every time he just thought about it, he whooped me. And I wasn't the only one that did it. They went down south and all my uncles jumped on me and laughed at me. And all their kids did the same thing. So I think that's it uh, for that one. How that hurts. Um, Reverend Mike, second, I, Reverend Mike I, I, I'm assuming you probably didn't try to do that again. Uh, some things, uh, a lesson is learned uh, when you don't do that again. So I still feel those whoopings to this day on that one. Yeah. And dad always told me you reap what you sow, and I got two of them that's 17 <laughs> months apart. <laughs> All right, so I'm leave that yeah. alone. Um, I say each the ministry thing is kind of cool, man, because it's like whenever he sees something, <laughs> he'll talk to me about it. He saw something yesterday when we talked. Now, I ain't gonna bring that up, but uh, <laughs> he brought that to my attention. So, Pastor Moore is, is always is, watching, he's always is, is watching. That, is that Reverend Mike, is that Candace laughing in the background? Yeah. <laughs> say hi, Candace. Oh, hey. oops. <laughs> oops. Hey, say hi, Candace. Hi. There you go, right there. Hey. hey. Yep. Hey. Yep. So, ministry moment is like when you don't think you don't think nobody looking. It's Jesus and Pastor Moore. That's all I got to tell you. Pastor Moore, let you know he watching. That's it. I leave it like that. So uh, the funny thing when, when uh, you know Pastor Moore preaches and he gives illustrations about my grandfather W. M. Moore talking about when he whipped you talking about didn't I tell you not to do that again and then he'll say something like uh, you gonna do it again he said no sir you gonna you're do lying. it again no sir then you're lying then <laughs> say that about my granddaddy but he did that to us too <laughs> I can't say nothing. <laughs> with Chris, with Chris, I want to say uh, he's he's been preaching since he's been talking. That's all he ever wanted to do. He used to type out his little sermons. I don't know how he learned how to type. When we go down south in the car, we had to listen to his sermons all the way locked in the car. So he's been preaching a long time. And, and um, I used to kid him, "You're gonna be a preacher." He that's all he ever wanted to do. And with Mike, I said, "You're gonna be a preacher." Like I ain't gonna be no preacher. No, I ain't gonna be that. <laughs> oh, I ain't gonna be no preacher. So yeah, I got one. Preaching had to run. Him. Preaching had to run and jump, Mike. And just jump on him. <laughs> yeah, but one I, thing I remember with go ahead, Mike. Chris had graduated from college, and Mike had moved back home, and both of them was in the house, and I thought it was wrong at the time, but it, it worked out. He hunting me here, but um, he gave him like. 30 days, y'all gonna be out of here. I thought it was wrong. Like, y'all gonna have everything in your room, your TVs, your beds. 30 days, y'all out of here. They gotta go, they gotta go. So, <laughs> like, we'll help so y'all find a place. I thought it was wrong, but that's one of the best things they <laughs> ever could have done wow. because they end up in their own houses. So, yeah. but anyway, yeah. he like gave them a 30 day out. <laughs> And we'll give you Remember. everything in your room. Just take it. Oh, TV, anything you want. But that's one of the best decisions they he had he he did. I left home when I was 17. But they both gonna move back home. But I know today's <laughs> time people do have to move home, you know, because the economy yeah. is so bad. But right. that's one of the best uh decisions that could have been made for them. Yeah. That that's great. Rev Reverend Mo, do you want to share yours first or would you like me to go? Uh, I can share mine because mine gonna be real quick and lacking details. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, it is. You know, because because I think this is important not only just to share, but for those who are watching. Um, and mine it relates to sin and Pastor Moore handling uh, my sin, and you know just the discipline the the wisdom, the mentorship, the, the fathership that he's shown um, when I've fallen short, right? And how he handled that and helped me get past um, those habits and those strongholds and those deep-rooted sins um, that was in me. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's been some 
been some tough times, you know what I'm saying? But Pastor Moore knows how to um, discipline and um, correct with gracious, um, graciousness and the godliness. And um, I think that's very important um, just to kind of share, you know, because I, I know there's a lot of individuals who are battling with sin, but you don't want to go talk to your pastor about it, right? And you mm -hmm. stay stuck mm -hmm. in it. So I just kind of want to encourage people as it relates to this topic, you know, you, you, you probably need to give him a call, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so he can work with you through it. You know, and uh, pass them. I hope your phone don't start blowing up. But you know, uh, but, but I want to go the ahead. Key, the key with that, though, uh, uh, Reverend Mo, was that you were willing to listen, and you were willing to to follow godly instructions, and that's how you walk through it and walk out of it. Uh, everybody's not willing to listen, and and so that's the key to it. That when a person is willing to listen and whether ready willing to take godly counsel so that's yeah. amen so, so that's my so, I, 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 go ahead jackson without no, so, <laughs> so so for me and and i'm going to share the details um you know mo as you would say this is a book like i i've I've, tell, I've done my best to chronicle all of my experiences that i'm learning as a leader so i can remember this had to be, wow, eight, nine years ago. I mean, we are in the midst of the Lifestyle Stewardship Capital Campaign. Uh, Dr. Moore appoints me as co-director. And of course, you know, as a young energetic leader, uh, trying to make things happen, trying to execute. I remember Reverend Chris, uh, within the worship experience, we would present every second and fourth Sunday as it relates to the Lifestyle Stewardship Capital Campaign. So the presentation that one particular fourth Sunday, um, one of our campaign members did a video and we showcased it to the entire congregation. And Reverend Mo, Reverend Chris, Reverend Mike, I don't know if you remember this or not, but they played the video and it wouldn't work. And they just kept playing it and playing it and playing. And it, it, it just like, it didn't work. And in the yeah. back of my mind, well, first off, I'm like, I'm not going to the, well, I was a deacon at that time, but I'm like, I'm not going anywhere near the front because I know Dr. Moore would be hot. <laughs> and, after, and after the service, I talked to Mo, and Mo was like, yeah, doc, Dr. Moore was asking where you was at on the stage. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I wanted to completely stay away from you. But I remember having a conversation with you a couple days later, and you taught me something that was so vital for any leader or any believer. And that is, and I stick by that principle today. That's why I always, I'm talking to a whole bunch of people. You share with me, never do anything in isolation that you have, you have channels, you have ministries, you like, you should have touched bases with somebody in the media department to make sure that that video was five star. And so that lesson you taught me the importance that a leader, that a believer, you should always do things in collaboration with others and never do anything in isolation. And that leadership principle has yielded uh, great results uh, of, of me doing that. So definitely do appreciate that, Dr. Mo. Bless the Lord. Oh my son. Remo. Hey, you you got a right or wrong, man, as we as we wrap, wrap up. I forgot to ask you, man, my bad. <laughs> You call him Reverend Mo? That sound like in the cotton field. That's what they say. Mo's cotton. <laughs> Daniel's cotton. My name is Dana. Daniel. Daniel's cotton. Mo's, Mo's cotton. cotton. <laughs> I'm but, sorry. But, but let, let me say this before you get into your right or wrong, that um, yeah. I'm so appreciative of the ministry of Mount Zion and the members and literally everything that happened because I am uh, the challenging things, the things that were not so challenging, it takes everything to mold um, us into who we are. And so um, I, I'm, I'm forever grateful to the ministry of Mount Zion because the preacher, the pastor that I have become is because of the um, togetherness of the Mount Zion congregation. And so 
I've learned scripture. I've learned how to obey scripture. I've learned how to, uh, how to really teach other folks scripture and how to get the results of scripture. And all that came through the growth in Mount Zion. And so uh, what I've learned, I continually want to share uh, because I think the, the purpose of us learning is to share. Uh, yeah. And it's literally robbery uh, to God and to really take his blessings and not willing to share them. And so and that's why I'm so adamant in, in teaching and developing because whenever you learn something, you owe something. And so uh, that's kind of a, the, my model that whatever I know, the Paul, Paul said it this way. He said, I'm indebted to the Romans. And so like I owe them because of what I know I owe because of what I've been blessed with, I owe. And so I've got to do something and we've got to do something. God has blessed us and uh, with phenomenal knowledge, phenomenal expertise, Gwen in the medical field and with her uh, uh, assisted living home and, and, and nonprofit business. Uh, and so she's always sharing that knowledge with people and individuals. So whenever we learn, whatever a person learns and God gives them knowledge, insight uh, and blessings, immediately you owe somebody else and you cannot hold it back because you got to share it so others can develop. Mm -hmm. So I'm, we're just appreciative to the, the ministry of Mount Zion, the community of Kalamazoo, um, because um, it has been a blessing for us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, we thank, thank each and every one of you for allowing us to serve in this part of the country, uh, able to walk in our spiritual gifts. Um, we're, we're happy and we just, we're grateful. No. We're grateful Jackson. to God for choosing us. Jackson, did you have one man or no? No, sir. Oh no. my goodness! All right, all right. Now we know. I know that uh, that Vita, our daughter Vita, she couldn't get on, but just really want to shout out to her if she, she's at work. She couldn't make it, and I'm glad Mike could join us, and Reverend Chris could join it, and we want to shout out to all their their spouses, uh, Danielle and little Christopher and, and Cameron want to shout out to them and, and Madison and Michael the second and Candace and, and Amen. thank God for Amen. William and, and Vita and, and Emory and Tyler. And so we're just the whole family. Praise God. Hey Mike, where your kids at? <laughs> where your kids at? They're right there. Hey Mikey. <laughs> See, All right. Where Madison. Madison. There you go. See, where, where little Chris? I just called him. He on the way. Oh, I thought he was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Usually, usually we see them every, every. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so on that right and wrong thing, the other day, I don't know which one of y'all went into the women's bathroom and asked folk if it was right or wrong. But me. I will say, I was at the church yesterday on Wednesday when we were doing our live services, and somebody, I ain't going to say who, went into the women's restroom like it wasn't nothing wrong. <laughs> I ain't going to say who. As long as there wasn't another woman in there. It was a brother. It was a man. I ain't going to say who did it. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> oh, the problem oh, come in when somebody else season. is in there and the door is unlocked. That's the problem. And Cameron's back, too. <laughs> we thank y'all for allowing us uh, your time and to let us come into your homes. We're just, like I said, we're grateful. We just can't thank you enough. And I do apologize because I can't help who I am and I'm just me, just plain old country girl. Amen. No, 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 no apology needed. Uh, so, so listen, you guys, thank you so much for your time, all of your comments. You know, all of your love you're showing. Um, as we end this, please hit that heart button, hit that like button a whole bunch of times. And uh, we want to ask you to join us on tomorrow. Tomorrow at 645, we have seven, eight preachers who's going to be preaching on um, God I Am. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is I Am. Yeah. So listen, you don't want to miss this powerful service that's going to truly bless you. And as a church, it's our endeavor to continue to serve you, to continue to um, bless you, to continue to encourage you, especially, I mean, always, but especially during this pandemic, uh, we're here for you. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please tune in <clears> tomorrow <throat> at 645 and join us at our regular times on Sunday. And if you missed anything, all of our content is on YouTube, all of this on Facebook. So you can scroll back months, weeks, days, and you can go ahead and watch those services again. Um, and yeah, appreciate y'all. And uh, also, 
on Saturday, our first lady will be back. Uh, we will be doing a virtual uh, party with our first lady uh, this Saturday at two o'clock p.m. So you do not want to miss that because it's going to be a wonderful time in the Lord. Right it's here, gonna, it's going to be hats. Live. It's going to be hats. So even if you put on the pajamas under down below, all they're going to see is the tops. Amen. <laughs> Get the fancy hat and put on. I know we used to not wearing yeah. no clothes now. Put put on your hat, take a picture, and submit it in the comic section while they're there you live. Go. Um, there you go. Um, on Facebook on Saturday. All right, ladies, wear your hats. All right. So um, thank Jackson. you all. Thanks. Thank thank you guys. Hey, Amen. If there's no more closing words, Jackson, Reverend Chris, Reverend Mike, First Lady, Pastor yeah. Moore, um, we gonna shut it down. Shut it down. I appreciate y'all. See y'all later. Thank, thank you for you. watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.